Wow, Stardew Valley is such a simple game. You can actually complete it using these three simple steps. Enjoy! Okay, step 1. You need to complete the community center. To do that, you are going to need to plant basically every single crop in the game across the three main seasons. Pumpkins, blueberries, melons, all of the good stuff. It will take you at least 70 in-game days, but then you can complete all of the crop bundles. Don't forget about those gold quality crops too. So far, so good. Next, you'll need to collect almost every type of forgeable in the game, including those pesky winter forgeables that only show up up in winter. So horseradish, sweet peas, nautilus shells, snow yams, you need them all. You also need forageables that are harder to come by like mushrooms, cave carrots, and fiddle fern. And if you miss one of them, well better luck next year. So pay attention, don't miss them. Oh, you think fishing is really hard in this game? Tough. You need to fish. You need to do a ton of fishing. You need to catch 24 fish to complete the community center. This includes easy fish like carp and sardines. But unfortunately, this also includes those near impossible fish like puffer fish and even a sturgeon. Oh, and yes, they are spread across all seasons. So make sure to fit fishing into your already busy schedule. Are we done? No. You need animals, it's not an option. You just absolutely need animals if you want to make it past the first step to completing this game. You need chickens, cows, rabbits, and ducks. Then you need to look after them, feed them, pet them, and make them love you. You can't just simply have them, they need to adore you. Your animals will start off giving you small eggs, small servings of milk, but that's just not good enough. You need the large kind, but that's the easy part, because you also need duck feathers and rabbit's feet. They are easy to come by when you have tons of animals and when they adore you, but pretty frustrating to obtain if you are early in the game. So, pet your animals and keep them fed. You can ignore them later on. We are almost done with step 1, I promise. Next, you need to dive into the treacherous mines to collect monster parts. This is not too bad. Just grab some bat wings and slime and you'll be good to go. You will also need various resources to complete the boiler room, a copper, iron, and gold bar, plus a couple random things like quartz and frozen tears. The boiler room is almost effortless compared to the other bundles. Money is your next goal. You need money to buy seeds, farm buildings, and animals. Without money, you're not going anywhere. On top of buying all of these things, you need an excess of 42,000 gold to complete the vault bundle. Luckily, making money gets easier as you play the game, so you should have no trouble making this jump change. Last, and most definitely not least, we need to be extremely lucky and buy red cabbage seeds from the traveling merchant. If she doesn't sell it here, we'll sell it in the second year. But if you are not completing the community center within the first year, well then you should probably reset. It's an ego thing. After finding and donating all of these items to the community center, you will have completed step 1. Step 1 is actually not that difficult. You just need to plan it all and have some luck on your side and you will be good to go. Surprisingly, completing the missing bundle and gaining access to the cinema is not technically required to beat Sturdy Valley. Strange, isn't it? Step 2 is so much easier, you'll see. All you need to do is complete Ginger Island. And to do that, you will need to first get 5 battery packs, 5 iridium bars, and 200 pieces of hardwood to restore Willy's boat to its former glorious self. Hopefully you have started collecting those during step 1. 200 hardwood is a lot of effort as you can only get about 12 per day. Restoring the boat will give you access to Ginger Island. Tutorial over. This is where the game really starts. Now you need to unlock the Ginger Island farmhouse. This sub step is important because you are going to spend a lot of time on Ginger Island. Running back to your farm is going to waste too much time, so you need a place to sleep that is near your goals. See that volcano? It isn't just for show. You should conquer it and reach floor 10 as soon as you can. On floor 10, you will be able to enchant your tools and weapons for complete domination. You should also work on finding 
mining all of the fossils for Professor Snail. This can take a while, but keep at it. The rewards it gives you is worth it on its own. Next, you should complete the quest that Birdie gives you. You will get an interesting recipe that you will likely never use. I would recommend catching all of the unique fish on Ginger Island now, but it's not necessary yet. You are most likely really close at this point. But the last thing to do in step 2 is to find golden walnuts until you have at least 100 golden walnuts. They are hidden extremely well, so good luck with that. Now you will have access to Mr. Key's walnut room. In here, you can click on this little machine over here to view your completion progress. And that is what triggers the next step. Step 3, the easiest step and the most enjoyable step. Now that you can view your progress, you now need to reach 100% true perfection. And to do that, just find the remaining 30 golden walnuts. Make about 12 million gold and buy that golden clock as well as all 4 magical obelisks. Now that the hard part is done, we just need to marry someone, have 2 kids and then befriend every single character in the game to maximum friendship level. Yes, this does unfortunately include Clint. But wait, there's more. You need to craft every single item in the game, including items that you do not have the recipe for, like the deluxe scarecrow for example. Then you need to plant, harvest, and sell every single crop in the game, as well as cook each and every single recipe in the game. Hopefully, you have been checking out the cooking channel on Sundays. At this point in the game, you have probably found the majority of the star drops, except for two. The two hardest star drops drops to obtain. First, just catch every fish in the game, then complete the museum by donating every type of artifact and mineral to our boy Gunter. Remember to make use of magic bait for the fish and treasure troves for the museum. They make things so much easier. There is only one thing left to do. Complete all of the monster eradication goals. Defeat 1000 slimes, 500 dust sprites, 250 serpents, and many other enemies. This is is pretty easy since you already have access to the volcano. Get a buffed up infinity gavel and nothing can stand in your way. After you have completed all of that, you are done! Bonus step. Step number 4. Story Valley is technically complete after achieving perfection. But what about true perfection? Don't worry, you are almost there. If you got this far, there should be only 3 achievements left for you to complete. Remember that missing bundle? Yeah, complete that. You need some really rare items like caviar, prismatic shards, and a dinosaur egg. But it is worth the effort because you will get a cinema that you will never use. Next, complete 40 help wanted quests. Then beat Journey of the Prairie King without dying a single time. Lastly, and this is the hardest achievement in the game, purchase all of the JoJo community development projects. I know, you want to boycott the JoJo Corp, but you need to achieve true perfection in Stardew Valley. Want to make your adventure easier? Watch this video to find out how. Thanks for watching, but for now, I will see you in the next video.